Hey guys, and welcome to another Flash Masters interview. In today's interview, we're crazy excited to be joined by the incredible Amber Henry. I have to say, I am one of Amber's biggest fans, huge fangirl, so to have her on today is one fantastic honor. Those of you joining us on YouTube are going to see how Amber created these incredible images. But for those of you joining us in the Flash Masters member zone, we're also going to be looking at these four images, alongside discussing how Amber uses TikTok to not only build her brand, but also get bookings. So without further ado, let's speak to Amber. So Amber, welcome to Flash Masters. We are so pleased to have you joining us today. Thank you so <laughs> much. I love being here. This is awesome. We are very excited. From the moment we, we came up with the concept of Flash Masters, we absolutely knew we had to have you on board. So it's been a, a fantastic collaboration and we're so excited to be able to share some of your images today. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Thank you so much. I was very, very honored uh, to get to get Neil's proposal. And I was from the moment he was started talking about it, I got super excited. There's nothing else like this out there. Um, it's going to be an incredible journey and I'm so glad to be here for it. Oh, thank you so, so much. Yes, it's definitely been worth all the hard work. And we're really, really excited to be able to share everything with everyone. So yeah, before we start looking at your images, which I have to say are just out of this world, I am such a huge fan girl of yours. Um, yeah, I'm going to try not to blush whilst, <laughs> <laughs> whilst we're having this interview because I just absolutely adore your work. Um, but yeah, everybody sort of likes to know how everyone like yourselves has, who has become a Mad Margaret ambassador and ambassador for so many different from brands and have achieved such great success sort of where this all came from um because I'm pretty sure most of us growing up didn't think I know I'm going to be a photographer when I grow up or I'm going to photograph weddings and it might have been but yeah we're always interested to hear sort of how you you came into to being a photographer awesome so well um I would say the same thing I, I didn't plan on being a photographer ever it didn't really cross my mind um, I do remember being really young and attending a wedding at a church that I grew up at and my friend's older sister was getting married. And I remember watching the photographer. I was more, more interested in, in him and what he was doing and creating than I was in the entire wedding itself or the bride. Um, I was just fascinated by it, but I didn't have, um, I didn't grow up with a lot of money or resources. So, uh, what I used to do is I had like a little point and shoot camera and I would sneak my friends into a dressing room and we would try on all like the prom and homecoming gowns and then I would pose them in the dressing room and take real quick pictures and then hide it so that we didn't get in trouble because we couldn't afford the <laughs> gowns or anything but I just wanted to uh, create photos of them I guess so maybe that's where it started um I just I liked people I liked capturing people I liked storytelling um I used to draw I was an artist first, so yeah. I would draw faces. Oh, wow. I was obsessed with faces. With, um, and when I was in the eighth grade, the kids in my class would pay me to draw celebrities for them. So I drew Selena and I drew Tupac and I drew anybody that they would threaten me and they'd give me like $5 and I would hand draw these pictures. So um, I think it, that's just where it started. I had a love of, of storytelling wow. and, and people and faces and it kind of just, it kind of just went from there. <laughs> That's incredible. So in terms of taking it from a hobby, and like I said, sneaking into changing rooms with your friends, sort of what, what was your first paid gig or sort of what happened to then produce sort of Amber Henry photography? So I was a young mother. I think I was 22 and I had a two-year-old son. Um, my son, Gabriel, he is autistic. So, and I was uh, recently divorced. So there was a lot of bad things going on in my life, <laughs> a lot of struggles and a local um, studio called Olin Mills. I don't know if you remember them back in the day. Um, so they had studios and different chain stores. Um, they were uh. Uh, hiring. So I went and applied and they're like, you have no experience what you're doing. And I just said, look, you have to hire me. I will be good. I promise. I want to be a photographer. And they called me back the next week and they said, Hey, you got the job. We're going to, you know, start you off training at our studio. And so that's kind of how I got into it. I, um, I worked there for through the company for four and a half years and yeah. I managed uh, four different studios in the state and my studios um, were always the highest grossing ones. 
Um, wow. So I was doing really well. So that's how I started. And then they, you had to work every weekend. So I worked every weekend for four and a half years. There was no weekends wow. off. So out through my 20s, I never partied. I never did anything. I worked. Um, and then I just decided I really wanted to get into weddings. I really wanted to get in weddings. And I had um, some friends who were getting married. And the studio would not give me a weekend off to do the wedding, even wow. though it was months and months in advance. And so I just said, look, I'm done. I quit. And I'm going to go do a wedding. And I had to borrow a camera because I didn't even own a camera. <laughs> So I borrowed a camera and I went out and shot this wedding. And that was, oh man, I want to say 15 years ago, 15, 14 years ago was my first wedding. Wow. Yep. And I just never looked back. And I guess, yeah incredible it's it's always so good hearing other people's experiences and and speaking to so many other photographers it seems to be a common theme that generally if you want to do this job you have just got to put yourself out there take risks and absolutely go for it and you've completely sort of summarized that within an incredible story there from not even having your own camera to shoot your first wedding um so yeah hats off I think you've (laughs) certainly done very very well there and uh, yeah it certainly shows sort of the dedication that you need to to sort of get to the top of the field where you are now so yes kudos I, <laughs> yes, I, I really truly strongly in my heart believe that if you want something you are the only one who's going to stand in your way it doesn't mean it's going to be easy because it's not going to be easy anything worth having is not easy um but I do believe that it doesn't really matter where you come from um you're you can achieve your goals you absolutely can do it it's going to be difficult but you can do it. Everybody can do it. Absolutely. It's such a fantastic message and and something that, um, yeah, as, as I assure that all of us as experienced photographers get asked a lot sort of all the time about how we got there or, or the advice. And generally the biggest one is you've just got to go for it. You have to believe in yourself and give it 100%. And once again, you're just absolutely testament to that. The hard work pays off. So uh, yeah, thank you so much. So, no you're very very welcome so yeah before we start looking at these incredible images that we have lined up um I'd imagine sort of working for this studio where they trained you was that sort of where you started learning the basics of off-camera flash or is that sort of how you 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 become someone who is such you know a fantastic ambassador for the use of flash in photography so um the good thing about working for the chain studio was I learned how to work with people Um, of all different ages, all different sizes, all different backgrounds. I learned how to pose. That was one of the number one things that we had to learn was posing. Um, They didn't really teach us a lot about lighting. Everything was preset. So um, I could move lights around. I could could create my own backlighting or I could move the lights, but we weren't allowed to actually touch them. So it was very much like the desire to create something new that I had to do within those parameters. So when I left the company and I went on my own, it was pretty much like starting from scratch because they didn't teach me about power output, nothing, nothing. So I spent a lot of my time online going through educational resources like Flash Message is going to be. Um, I remember when Creative Live started up, um, like that first day I was in there. I have been doing um, Jared Yonis's online training for years. So I was I really had a hunger to find a way to do it myself um, without having as many resources as we have now, because this was even 10 years ago, we didn't have anything as incredible as this. Um, well, also when I started, the equipment was not as good as it is now. So if you wanted to go outside yeah. and overpower the sun, you had to take these giant battery packs <laughs> with you and these huge umbrellas and you had to, tr- you know, trout them through whatever. And it was exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I think photographers now have so many wonderful resources at their fingertips. Um, even the, um, the people that you have on here, you have Megmod and, and Geek Odo and things, um, just incredible, incredible products that really help us create the images we want uh, to create. Um, but yeah, so to answer your, answer your question, no, I learned about people and I learned about um, posing and about um, making a sale, but I didn't know lighting until I pursued it myself 
uh, through online resources. Fantastic. And you, you sort of touched on there as, as we were about to sort of move on. Everyone loves to know, um, including myself, sort of what equipment you use. And you touched on how lucky we are as photographers now that there's certain brands such as Magmod and the size of the equipment that we get to take out onto location now doesn't require a huge battery pack like it did before. So could you just, uh, yeah, let us know sort of what sort of... Um, sort of equipment you're currently using whilst you're going out on your shoots with regards to, to off-camera flash? Oh, oh, yeah. So I have uh, two camera bags I take out with me. I use uh, the Think Tank uh, roller derby bags, and I usually have three light stands. I try to keep them very compact and portable so that we can carry them easily. Um, and I have a reflector always on hand. So I am a Canon shooter. I've been a Canon shooter since the yeah. start of my career. I just picked it up. I loved it. Um, I really think that Canon is just very sleek in the handheld design. It's very lightweight. I have the R6 right now, which if you haven't gone mirrorless nice. yet, um, people just go mirrorless. I I am not one for change. I don't like change. I don't like things to change. I like to just <laughs> be in my world. So when new cameras come out, it's always like, do I need to? So I put it off for many years, but oh my gosh, the the incredible freedom that, that I get from with the mirrorless is wonderful. Yeah. So I use the mirrorless system, um, Canon lenses. My go-to is I have the 24105, uh, the 7200, I call it the beast because it's a workhorse. Um, I have the 50, I have the 85, I have the 100. Um, I have the uh, 16, 1635 for wide shots. Um, those are my go-to lenses, but 24105, 7200 are what I'll use mostly for a wedding day. Um, I have all the speed lights. I have about three or four speed lights I take with me. And then I have the, uh, the Gikodo systems, which um, I just switched over from Godox. And I'm telling you right now, if you haven't made that switch, it is time. It's one of those things where it's like, I didn't like to change it. I don't want to change. But the quality that you're going to get from these lights is just superior, superior. So I have the Gikodo systems. And they just came out with some brand new soft boxes, umbrellas, and uh, they just make my heart so happy. And I also <laughs> use, <laughs> I also use a Meg Mod, which I've used for years. I love the Meg gels. You'll see a lot of my work has the colors in it. Those are all Meg gels. They're super fast. You want to wow a client on a day, put them against a wall and use some gels and show them the back of your camera and they will freak out. It's wonderful. Um, so the Meg Mod system is super fast and portable lightweight anything that's lightweight and portable makes me happy I, I hate <laughs> absolutely carrying. you know you're on your feet all day already as yeah. it is and you're carrying the camera all day why make it harder on yourself and this is something we, we've asked quite a few of other, our other ambassadors as well when you're shooting um, a wedding day do you usually take an assistant with you or um, are you usually shooting solo so I always have an assistant um it right. doesn't mean that they're a second shooter um I, I will sometimes have a second shooter and an assistant, but I will never, ever do a wedding by myself. Some people are great and they're talented and they can do it. I just cannot. I, um, I'm too quick. I shoot too quick. I need somebody yeah. to help me with the lighting, to help doing setting up. Um, I just need a second pair of eyes. Sometimes I miss something or, um, I mean, even just being a hot day, my assistant coming to me with a glass of water is, can just make your day so much better. Yeah. So um, my advice to anybody who's shooting solo is just get an assistant, get them to help you. You get to talk to somebody all day long. <laughs> like, it just makes your life better. And there's so many young and hungry photographers out there who would yeah. just love to come carry your bags, talk to you, learn from you, um, make some lifelong friends that way. So yeah, myself and assistant. And then sometimes I have a second shooter as well. Amazing. I'm sure those assistants are doing a much better job than some of the drunk groomsmen I've used to uh, to carry your whole lights for yes, me on certain I would never shoots. trust them. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun. It's they certainly have their place. hit and miss. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. certainly been hit and miss when I'm thinking, yeah, you're just lighting the floor there. So um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely something that I should be implementing. And uh, I think going forward that I certainly will. So uh, yeah, we're about to go down now and start looking at your images. So yeah, this first image here um, is just absolutely stunning. 
And first of all, as I said earlier, we're huge fans of your work here. And as soon as we saw this image, we just absolutely loved the vibrancy and the punch. Uh, so yeah, if you could just uh, give us a bit of detail of how you created this. I'm assuming it was on an actual real life wedding day and not a shoot. Yes. No, this is a real wedding day. So this is the location I shoot at all the time. It's a hotel, um, local hotel in Bay City, Michigan. And <clears throat> this is the suite that they give brides. And it's a beautiful suite. But I have shot this window like a hundred times. It's very, very bright. There's a lot of light coming through it, but it really is. If the bride wants a dress hanging shot, it's really one of the only good spots in the room um, yeah. to hang it. The problem is the lights coming in from behind it. And I have done the natural light shot and they look pretty, but you lose the detail in the dress. So um, my videographer, uh, Jeff, uh, helped me hang up the dress and these little curtain rods that he brought. And we shot the dress by itself. And just the way that I feel about details is that they're, they're just objects until a human comes and gives them a touch of love, if that makes sense. Yeah. So the dress is by itself. Right. It's, it's, it's beautiful, but the, the bride being in the photo is, is what her grandchildren, her great grandchildren are going to want to see. So we did the pictures of her in the photo. Um, but I just, I needed something. I just wanted something creative and I loved her silhouette. Her hair is perfect. You know, she had a beautiful lips. Everything was great. So I just used one light, um, off to the side and I put a mag grid on it. So the grid really structures the lighting and just gives you that little, that little spotlight without getting the spill over it. Um, and it hit just the dress. So I posed her up and kept her in the shadows and it's pretty true to color how the sky was on her day. So we're not, um, I don't oversaturate my pictures. I shoot them this yeah. way out of camera. So they, it, it is the blue of the sky on her day. It does look natural, but it just has this really cool element um, and a lot of fun a lot of fun absolutely no we absolutely loved this image when we first saw it it's obviously just taking and you know we talk about this a lot with our other ambassadors is our ability to use flash to to really change reality and, and make things look just a little bit more special than they do to the naked eye and that's certainly you know you've really used this to to full advantage there to get that large blue sky um so yeah we all love using flash for that i'm assuming you're the same it's all about color for me <laughs> Yeah, it's which is hilarious because I always wear black. Um, and my <laughs> like I love black; it's my favorite thing. And but my pictures are very colorful. <laughs> I'm the same actually <laughs> or I'm always looking to add color to my images and then I'm just not really the same mm. in person I think yeah I, sh yeah, I should yeah. be having pink hair with green streaks or something but right. but no I play it very sa simple and safe myself but I just absolutely adore some color <laughs> right exactly so yeah I, I chose this second image because well first of all it's insane um, and yeah one of the reasons why we're such huge fans of yours Amber is because you're able to take time after time these incredible images incredible portraits but seemingly within completely different scenarios and situations so from your weddings to your portraits um everything that you do um yeah you seem to be using you know your, your lighting so effectively in such a broad range of situations so yeah could you tell us a little bit more about obviously what looks to be very much a beauty shot and maybe how this might be different to, to lighting or editing compared to you would on a wedding day sure so um, this image came about as um, one of several times a year, two at the least, um, I will create something for myself, um, something where I will bring in a model or a friend to do it so that I don't have to worry about time constraints, creativity constraints. I tell them about my idea, we make it happen and we just get to play. And it also does help me work out lighting problems. If I have something um, that's just not working, I can kind of step back and play with it on the day. So. Um, I really do encourage anybody, even if you're only shooting weddings, to find time to go out and create something for yourself. Uh, it, you will problem solve. Mm. You will just feel so rewarded as an artist. Um, and your pictures will get better. So this picture came about. Um, this is Brie, by the way. She is a dear friend of mine's daughter. And I met Brie when she was six. So that tells you how long I've known her. Um, <laughs> the wings behind her are metal. And they're actually um, uh, two pieces and they're for, they're like for the wall. I got them from Hobby Lobby. So they're just a wow. wall. Piece. And I had them, I didn't have anywhere to put them when I bought them. They were just so cool that I had to have them <laughs> in my life. So they were sitting in the garage and my husband and I were talking about it. And I said, you know, it would be cool if we could 
do something with them. So he actually mm-hmm. um, made this little contraption of pipe. Uh, he stuck them to the pipe so they can go up and down. So from there, I created the Valkyrie. So the headpiece on her I made. Um, it is more pieces I got from a craft store. I put the wings together. Um, I used floral thread to put the um, the flowers and things on and then I spray painted everything gold. Uh, the jewelry was outsourced. The sword is from my son's Halloween costumes. Um, wow. <laughs> the gown is um, her mother owns a dress shop. Um, so we kind of just, it just came about that I wanted something very strong. Brie herself, the model in the photo has a very difficult backstory. She had a trauma happen to her. Um, where she really lost all her power and she really was going through a a horrible, 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 horrible phase of her life. And um, I thought, what a better way than to make her my Valkyrie and give her 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 strength back. So um, as far as lighting goes, we have a light from behind her and then we have a main light up in the ceiling. So my studio is very short. I don't like my studio. I want to move. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> short ceilings. I don't have those big, beautiful ceilings. So yeah. we actually had to take out tiles in the ceiling and put the giant, I want to say we use maybe a, a 42, 46 inch beauty dish up in the ceiling above her. And my husband held it up above her to come down on her because I wanted just, I wanted the the lighting to fall under her eyes and under her jaw, just to give her that regal strength um, type of image. So that's where the Valkyrie came from. It's absolutely breathtaking. Really, really, yeah, stunning, stunning work. Yeah, I really did gasp when I saw this one. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of, of it and the story. Um, and it's hanging, it's one of the pictures hanging in my studio. I think it absolutely deserves to be there. Yeah, that's absolutely magnificent. Moving on to the next one here. Um, I absolutely adore this image. I saw a fantastic behind the scenes on TikTok, obviously showing how you created this. So for those of you who haven't seen the TikTok, I'm sure we'll be putting a link in the description. However, um, yeah, could you talk us through how you made this incredible image? Yes. So um, beautiful couple. I was looking really forward to photographing their wedding and they chose a uh, very old church in the area and it was very hot and very crowded and it had that beautiful overhead yellow orange lighting that just looks so attractive on everybody's (laughs) skin and gives you like that ghost face. Um, So (laughs) I I try to, (laughs) I try to not leave a church um, for the day, unless I can create at least one really beautiful image that I feel that would the couple would put up in their home. So not just like the family formals, which you always take or them at the church, but I just want something. I want a wow image. So I, I strive to create at least yeah. one image per um, difficult church lighting um, <laughs> client that I do. So this is actually the stairs on the left to the balcony where the bride is. She's going up to the balcony um, that overlooks the the chapel. And then the groom is in this little uh, prey area where they kind of shove the grooms and stuff before the service starts. And if when you see the behind the scenes, you'll see the lighting um, and the behind the scenes picture is true to, to what it was. It was just like that. It was just horrifying. But I loved the architecture. Um, because it has this beautiful shell shape and how often do you see two different levels in one little shape like that with the, um, the really interesting lighting hanging from the top. It was just such a cool little spot, little nook that had all this, um, this great offering to it. So I thought, uh, wouldn't it be great to tell a story here? So he's getting ready. So he's working on his watch and he's in his little guy spot getting ready and then she is in this beautiful um, kind of heavenly lighting, you know, coming down the stairs towards him, which is how I kind of posed her. Um, her face is turned up because the lighting was up here, but her eyes are down to the groom and you can tell that she's that she's coming down to meet him. So I thought, what a great way to tell a story. Um, the difficult part, of course, was the lighting, which always is. So if you are a natural light photographer, um, this is when just knowing how to use flash, it doesn't mean you have to use it all day yeah. long, but the knowledge of having it, um, can really help you out in these creative moments. So this is just two lights, um, two off. I think I had, okay. um, Godox 200s, 
there's one on him there's yep. one on her and i think i had the magmod uh, i want to say the sphere or maybe the grid um on him but the sphere on her to really direct the lighting and i stepped back and i think my first shot out of camera was very similar to this one and i even gasped i was like oh my gosh this looks so good uh, <laughs> you take those, i love having those you moments those when you kind of like, shock yourself going oh damn damn i'm, I'm on <laughs> that's kind of how i felt about this one um and then the posing and thing but um the other the other thing about learning flash and knowing it is that you can be very quick on a wedding day so we set this up while they were saying goodbye to people. My assistant stood in and did the test shots and we put them in. I posed them. And I want to say that this actual photo took under five minutes to just get them in there, pose them, get the lighting, wow. get, you know, um, the composition done. And then we were out um, on the party bus and ready to go after that. Um, and the rest of their wedding day, I believe, was outside. Um, so there wasn't a whole lot more creative spots that I could have done for their day. So had I not taken the time to create this image um, and just kind of slow down and make sure that they got this, there really wouldn't have been a lot of it on their wedding day that was not just, you know, as things were. So, so yeah, so I'm very proud of this image. Excellent. Yeah, it's definitely, I think when you look at this image and knowing how to use the modifiers as well, particularly the MagMod grids, it really sort of shows how well you can control the light. And it's these kind of situations that without those modifiers, it would, you just couldn't really get this look really, could you? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Um, you know, you got to think of light like um, like water. Um, and I know Jerry actually did a whole class on this, which is hilarious. I've been saying this for years. Light is like water and it spills everywhere and we have to learn yeah. to control it, you know, using the grid to make it very heavy on or, or to, you know, kind of sprinkle it out softly with a um, diffuser. Um, but yeah, you really have to be a shaper of light uh, more than anything else. Yeah, you've, do, you've done it so, so well there. It's an absolute stunning image. Yes, really, really beautiful. So we're going to move on to our last image now that's going to be on our YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, as soon as I saw this one, I I was just blown away. And I, it's it's kind of not having the context or it feels quite mysterious um, using the silhouette, not really knowing who these subjects are or, what, or where they are. They're obviously celebrating. But yeah, could you give us a bit more... Of, of the background of the story of this image as well, please. Oh yeah, this is super fun. Um, so I was actually teaching at ClickCon. So I teach at ClickCon in Chicago once a year. And um, we were, I like to take my class out and just kind of walk and create. Um, I, I've, most of my classes are based on walking and creating because I want them to be able to go home and think about what we created so that when they're with their own clients in a scenario that might be difficult, they can say, oh, I remember to look for this or I remember this trick worked. So we were walking around the hotel and this was just this um, you know, sheer piece of, of glass that separated the bar area from um, the seating area. So I thought, you know, how cool would it be to tell a story without even seeing any faces? So I had three of our models go around and I had the one in the middle. So she's leaning up against the glass and I'm like, I can see her almost, almost perfectly as she is. It's so cool. Um, so I had them go up there. They're actually sitting on the back of the bench. So they're like the bucket yeah. seats are where their feet are on, but to get them up there. So they're sitting on the back of the bench and gave them glasses <laughs> and I used one flash uh, behind them to just help the shadows come through. Um, what I can say is when you're doing silhouettes like this with flash, what I always look for personally is not the eyelashes, which I know sounds crazy. But if you think about the way that their faces are turned, if I had moved them even slightly bit, you know, the wrong way, you would lose the shape and definition in their nose and their mouth. Um, so when a woman turns and I see her eyelash, then I know like that's going to be a killer shot. So they did have to really crank their heads and I had to keep telling them, turn, turn, turn. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. <laughs> but do, do you see how beautiful that, you know, their silhouettes look um, just from just from the shaping of the bodies? Absolutely. And that's something that's so important as well. And a really good piece of information. I think as photographers, when we first start to learn how to use silhouettes, it can just be so exciting when you see in the back of the camera, it, it, look, it looks so different and cool, but you don't necessarily think far beyond that when you start doing them. And it's those little details such as the eyelashes that really start taking the silhouette images to the next level there. 
Absolutely. And they're really going to set you apart when <clears throat> potential clients see your um, portfolio, taking a breath and kind of taking the picture in the back of the camera and thinking like, what's one or two things I could do mm -hmm. to make this better. Um, and then having your client or your model move. Um, some people say, you know, I just don't really want to take a lot of time and make my client uncomfortable. She's been sitting there for a while. It's like, okay, well, you can have her turn good now or you can fuss about it in Photoshop later and then have a client who might not like their picture. So just take the time with your client, get the, the pose correct in camera. Um, and this is another thing where off camera lighting um, is incredible because this image would not have been possible without it. But I have done this on blank walls, putting the, you know, the flash up against the wall and having the subject stand be between me and the flash and putting gels on it and doing colors there. Um, it's, it's just a world of endless possibilities. In fact, I've been in situations where, uh, let's say the end of the wedding day, the bride is just, you know, not looking her best. She's sweaty and her <laughs> hair is a mess and she was dancing. And I just want to get like one finer killer, killer image for her, her wedding album. And I just do a silhouette because her silhouette still looks stunning and you don't have to see the face. I put her wedding color gel on the wall behind her yeah. and create an image like this. And it's always fun. It's always super fun too. So just checking, did you put any gels on this particular image or is it sort of just generally balancing what the ambient that was in there? So this one I did not gel because this was the color the wall was giving me, which is this beautiful yeah. amber color. <laughs> and it just had this <laughs> like warm, you know, yellows and oranges and reds and, and mood to it. But if it had been white, yes, I absolutely would have put a gel on it for sure. Yeah, that's something I need to use way more. When they first arrived, I was pulling them out left, right and center. And then, uh, yeah, you just start getting busy and they've been neglected. I will say that my right. mag gels have sat in my bag, apart from my CTOs and to try and create some, uh, you know, some sunsets when we don't have them much in the UK. Um, but oh. yeah, the creative gels and really using the colors again, um, especially after seeing some of your images, um, oh. they're definitely coming out of my bag, especially heading towards winter season when you've got yeah. to just get that little bit more creative um, and yes we're going to see as we start talking about your last four images um, how you've really used those those creative gels to full effect um, so yes yeah, so thank you to everyone who has joined us on YouTube this is the last of the images we're going to be sharing of Amber's Amber we'd like to thank you one more time for being here today you've been absolutely fantastic and it's been great to see the behind the scenes of these photos however if you would like to see more of these photos that we're going to be discussing in our Flashmasters group, then of course you can head over to flashmasters.co, sign up, and the rest of this video will be in the members area. So for now, YouTube, goodbye, and we're going to continue now in the Flashmasters group.